I recently had the opportunity to visit 20 different parks in 6 different countries all through in the continent of Europe, and it was incredible to see all of these different places, see what they did differently, see what they all had in common. There was not a bad park that I visited. But what I want to do in this video is rank them from my least favorite to my very favorite. And let me just go out and say this was an incredibly hard thing to do. I had amazing experiences at so many of these places. So many on this list are interchangeable. I could swap them all around. There was no definite least favorite and no definite absolute favorite. And as great as it was to go to all these different places, there's still so many more parks in Europe than the ones that I visited. As I mentioned, I only did parks in six countries. That is Spain, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, and the UK. If I didn't mention one of the countries that your favorite park is in, I didn't visit it, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of great places out there. So this is not a definite the 20 best parks in Europe, period. Now before we get going, I do want to mention that I have a review of every single one of these parks on my channel. So if you want in-depth thoughts, be sure to go and check out the park reviews playlist. I go into a lot more detail in those videos, but because we have 20 parks I'm trying to get through, we're probably going to go through these kind of fast. Starting things off with number 20, we have Park Warner, and this was actually the first park that I visited in Europe. This was one of those parks I visited that felt pretty similar to an American amusement park. Standout rides include Stuntfall and Superman. And I would say it was a step up from a Six Flags park, but nothing about this place really blew me away. It was a great way to start off the trip. Absolutely glad I visited, but it does take the number 20 spot. Next up is Holiday Park in Germany. Most people know this place because of Exhibition G-Force, which actually was my second favorite roller coaster I rode in Europe. However, aside from Exhibition G-Force, Holiday Park didn't blow me away. It's a decently large park, however, there's not a ton of rides, and theming is also nowhere near to the extent of a lot of these other places. I think most people are going to go here so that they can ride Exhibition G-Force, which is an incredible coaster, but Holiday Park as a whole I thought was fine. Number 18 might be a bit of an upset for some people, especially if you're from the Netherlands, because number 18 is Efteling. I was not a big fan of this park, which I know is contrary to what a lot of people do think of this park. But you have to remember, everyone is different. We all have our own preferences, things that we look for when we go to a theme park. And for me, Efteling just didn't do it for me. It was very cutesy, lots of fairy tales. The park is absolutely enormous. It does have some very well done dark rides, your main coaster there is Baron 1898, and while I can appreciate the uniqueness and the history of Efteling, it was nowhere near one of my favorites I visited. Next we have Parque de Attractions, the second park I visited in Madrid, Spain. This park was a lot prettier than I was expecting, I didn't know a whole lot about it going in. I mainly knew about their Abismo roller coaster, which was awesome, but this park had a lot of surprises, lots of fountains, very green. And it's also right in the heart of Madrid, so location also adds a very cool factor to the place. They also have a very neat kids area with a Nickelodeon theme. Another park that has a Nickelodeon theme is Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which is taking our next spot. Blackpool is one of two boardwalk-like parks that I visit in Europe. I really thought it was cool how all the attractions interacted with each other. And Blackpool may not have the best roller coasters, but they do have a lot. My personal favorite was Icon, their newest ride, but they also have a lot of really old wooden roller coasters. And there's also a lot of charm here. Very neat place. And number 15 is Mirabilandia in Italy. This park is most well known for Ice Speed and Katoon, their two largest roller coasters. Some of the standout things about this, it almost has this pirate theme throughout the area. And like most of these parks in Europe, again, it was very pretty, very clean and well kept, and also very green. At number 14, we have Thorpe Park. This place is located just outside of London. It is very much an amusement park as opposed to a theme park. Lots of roller coasters. Park is not huge, it's actually located on an island. Standout coasters include Stealth, The Swarm, and my favorite ride, Darren Brown's Ghost Train. And this place is definitely not perfect. There are definitely some things that I think they could improve on, but I thought they also did several things very well. Gronelund is the other boardwalk-like park that I got to visit, this being located in the heart of Stockholm, Sweden. So this park probably had the coolest location out of most of the places we visited. It's in that urban setting. Standout coasters include Twister and Insane. And much like Blackpool, all of the attractions are intertwined with each other, except this park is a lot smaller than Blackpool. But it feels like there's just as many rides, if not more, and everything is just built up into layers, so the place is very cool. At number 12, we have Erlebnis Park Trips Drill. I did not know what to expect with this place at all. 
but it blew away those expectations. Probably one of the prettiest parks we visited in Europe. It is gorgeous. Your standout coaster here is gonna be Carajo, a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster. And the front half of this park really just felt like a small village, and then you get to the back, and it's these big wide open areas with grassy fields. It's a very cool contrast of how it almost feels like two completely different places depending on where you are in the park. Highly recommend. Number 11 is Wallaby Holland. Most people know this park because of Lost Gravity and Goliath, and of course their new for 2019 roller coaster, Untamed. I of course did not get a chance to ride Untamed while I was there, but I did do Robin Hood, the coaster it replaced. And I would say like Park Warner and Thorpe Park, this place felt kind of similar to an American amusement park. At one point it was a Six Flags Park. I do think this place is better than a lot of Six Flags parks. It's well landscaped, got a lot of very cool rides, and I had a great time here. Taking the number 10 spot is Toverland, another park in the Netherlands. And I feel kind of weird putting this here because I'm in that interesting situation where the Toverland that I visited is very different from the Toverland that currently exists because after we visited, they went through their single largest expansion ever. That included the addition of Phoenix, their B&M wing coaster. There's even a new front entrance and the entire park layout is almost like flipped now. So this is absolutely on the list of one of those places that I need to get back to. But I still thought the place had a lot of charm, very quirky, very neat. It had a whole indoor area, which was nice because at one point it rained. So we got to do plenty of attractions in there. I think this is a great place to go for families and thrill seekers. At number nine, we have Hansa Park. This is another one of those places that I would say has that classic European park feel. Lots of attractions. Your standout coaster here is Car in, which is absolutely fantastic. And not to be overdone, they also have Fluke von Novgorod, which is another stellar Gerslauer. And I just really enjoyed the atmosphere of the place. Next up is Gardaland, the other park that we got a chance to visit while in Italy. This is one of those Merlin parks, the same people who do Thorpe Park, Alton Towers. Your standout coaster here is Oblivion the Black Hole. They also have Raptor. And I really enjoyed my time here. Very well done park. There was a lot to it that I wasn't expecting. But up next at the number seven spot is Colmarden. And it kind of feels weird putting this up here because this is barely even a theme park. It's a zoo, but that has some theme park portions to it. Most people know this place because of Wildfire, which was my favorite coaster I rode in Europe. But I'm not just putting this up this high because of that ride. This place is amazing. It is huge, absolutely beautiful. Best zoo I've ever been to. So many awesome animals. And also has a really great sky ride that you can take at one point. And just barely missing out from the top five is Haida Park. I thought this park was gorgeous, really well landscaped, had some great architecture. Standout coasters include Krik, Flug der Dermonen, and Colossus, which unfortunately I did not get a chance to do Colossus. So that's another reason why I would want to go back here at some point to check that out. But I think this place had so much charm, but it's not just all focused on looks because they also have lots of great rides. So now we're at our top five. Number five is Liseberg, the last theme park I visited in Sweden. Liseberg is not that big, but like Gronaland, it is also in the heart of downtown. This is in downtown Gothenburg. Your standout coasters are Balder, and Helix. I did not get a chance to do Valkyria when I went because it was not yet open. But Liseberg is gorgeous. There's a lot of character. Theming is very well done. And it's one of those places that I wish I spent a bit more time at. And now we're at our top four and all four of these parks that I'm about to go through are interchangeable in my opinion. I think any one of these places could be the number one park in Europe for me. It was really hard ranking these four especially but this is the order I came up with. And number four we have Alton Towers. Like Efteling and Colmarden, this park is huge. A lot of the attractions are really spread out from one another. Your main coasters here are Nemesis Smiler. They also have Wicker Man, their newest roller coaster. This park definitely has some of the best roller coasters in Europe. So if you're a thrill seeker, this is one that is going to be in the top spot for a lot of people. The theming is not as well done as some of the others here but it's still very well landscaped and very pretty. But at the number three spot, we have Europa Park. I loved Europa Park. The only reason why this isn't the number one spot for me is because the roller coasters were not quite there for me. It has so many family coasters and what I call filler coasters, but it was missing that standout attraction for me. My personal favorite was Woden. They also have rides like Blue Fire and Silver Star. So in terms of roller coasters, it has a lot, but they are not the best. But what is the best is the different areas of the park. Absolutely incredible. Very well themed, very beautiful, and it is very easy to get lost here. 
at the number two spot. And for a while, I think this was my number one. I switched out the last minute. This is Fantasia Land. This is what I like to call the biggest small park I've ever been to. In terms of land, it is not huge. They have so many attractions and so many of these are world class. Your standout coasters are Terran and Black Mamba. Terran was my third favorite roller coaster I rode in Europe. And the theming of this place is out of this world. The Africa and Klugheim sections were incredible. And I'm sure Rukberg will be as well when that opens with Fly. So that leaves one park left, and that is going to be Port of Ventura World. And actually, I kind of lied. It's not really one park. I'm also clumping in Ferrari Land in with Port of Ventura World. They're technically two separate gates, but you can walk from one to the other. And I had a park hopper ticket that included both in one day. So I was going back and forth between the two. But your standout coasters here are Red Force, Shambhala, Furious Baco. So for me, I think the reason why I put this at the number one spot is it has some incredible roller coasters and it is gorgeous and there's a lot to do here. Fantasia Land has great rides, but is small and intimate. Europa Park is huge, but the roller coasters aren't quite as thrilling. This is the perfect combination of the two. Great theming and great rides. It is not perfect. It does not have the world's fastest operations that Europa Park has, but I can look past that and appreciate all that this park does do. I stayed on site while visiting here. We did two days and that was the way to go. I had an incredible time here. So that is how I rank the 20 best theme parks in Europe that I had the chance to visit. As I mentioned, there are still so many parks in Europe that I want to get to at some point, especially in countries such as France, Belgium, maybe Switzerland or Finland. Denmark, all these awesome places. But I'm super grateful for the parks that I did get to visit. They were all amazing. Ranking this was really hard for me, but this is the list that I came up with, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and of course check out the Park Reviews playlist where you can find in-depth thoughts on every single one of these places that I mentioned. In addition, you can also check out the Coaster Reviews playlist, which has an in-depth look at some of my favorite rides that I rode in Europe. So be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.